Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm a female mathematics PhD student and I decided to create a history of mathematics series on female mathematicians. I believe that representation helps encourage young aspiring mathematicians. So with this series, I aim to try and show that women are in fact quite capable of making progress in abstract mathematics. And the first woman I will talk about is Sofia Kovalevskaya. Sofia was born in Moscow, Russia on January 15, 1850 to Yelizaveta Fyodorovna Schubert and Vasily Vasilyevich Krukovsky. Her father, Vasily, who was an artillery general in the Imperial Russian Army, loved mathematics and science. When he was a student, he attended the lectures of the mathematician Mikhail Vasilyevich Ostrogradsky. In 1958, after her father retired, when she was just eight years old, Sofia's family moved to the country. This country house had many rooms and there was not enough wallpaper to cover them all. So to deal with this, they ended up putting Ostrogradsky's lecture notes on differential and in integral calculus on the walls of one of the nurseries in place of wallpaper. In her memoirs, she says, These sheets, all speckled over with strange, unintelligible formulas, soon attracted my attention. I remember as a child standing for hours on end in front of this mysterious wall, trying to figure out at least some isolated sentences and to find the sequence in which the sheets should follow one another. From this protracted daily contemplation, the outer appearance of many of these formulas imprinted themselves in my memory. Indeed, their very text left a deep trace in my mind, although they were incomprehensible to me while I was reading them. So even though she didn't know what these sheets meant, it had a deep impact on her as a young girl. So as was typical for families of her class in Russia during this time, Sofia had a good early education. Her governesses and tutors taught her how to speak Russian, English, French, and German with high proficiency. Her uncle Pyotr Vasilyevich Krukovsky, who was actually not a mathematician, first introduced her to asymptotes and the concept of infinity. In her memoir, she says, I heard from him for the first time, for example, about the quadrature of the circle, about the asymptotes which the curve always approaches without ever attaining them, and about many other things of the same sort, the sense of which I could not, of course, understand as yet, but which acted on my inspiration, imbuing me with a reverence for mathematics, as for a very lofty and mysterious science, which opened out to those who consecrated themselves to it a new and wonderful world not to be attained by simple mortals. I quite agree with the last thing she says. I think mathematics is so mysterious, but once you take the time to understand it, there is so much beauty. However, as much as Sofia loved mathematics, in 1860s Russia, women could not obtain a higher education. Only in 1878 did they start to allow this, first in St. Petersburg. To get a higher education, women needed to go abroad. However, they also couldn't just leave if they wanted to. They needed written permission from their father or husband. So Sofia married Vladimir Kovalevsky in 1868, a marriage of convenience, and they moved to Vienna and then Heidelberg. Though Western Europe was a bit more progressive, she still could not enroll at the University of Heidelberg. Instead, she was able to get special permissions to audit the lectures. In 1869, Sofia and Vladimir went to London, where Sofia debated with Herbert Spencer, the English philosopher, about women's capacity for abstract thought. So she was just 19 years old at the time and already debating with great thinkers. In 1870, she moved to Berlin, but the university there did not allow her to even audit classes because she was a woman. 
Instead, the famous mathematician Carl, Carl Weierstrass saw potential in her and was kind enough to let her study with him privately. He said Sofia was his most talented student, which is a big deal because he had many students who became famous mathematicians like George Cantor, George Frobenius, Wilhelm Killing, and Hermann Schwarz. And if you study math, you definitely know these names. Weierstrass taught Sofia the materials which were covered in the university lectures, and with his guidance, she wrote three papers. The first was on Laplace's calculations on the shape of Saturn's rings, so she improved upon a result of Laplace. The second was on the reduction of abelian integrals into elliptic integrals. And the third was on the local existence and uniqueness theorem for the Cauchy initial value problem for partial differential equations with analytic coefficients. She presented these papers to the University of Göttingen as a doctoral thesis, hoping at least one of them would be approved. So you know how usually people just submit one thesis, and since she was a woman and not even allowed to go to these university classes, she thought for safety she would submit three <laughs> theses. And it worked, so in 1874, the university granted her a PhD, summa cum laude, in absentia. And actually, this last paper on the Cauchy initial value problem happened to be a generalization of a result which Cauchy had proved earlier in 1842 and this result was not even known by Kovalevska and Weierstrass. And now this result is known as the cauchy kovalevska theorem and she became the first woman in Europe to be awarded a doctorate in mathematics. So really a trailblazer. After she got her PhD, Sofia returned to Russia with her husband and was hoping to get a job in mathematics. But because she was a married woman, and because of her political involvement in Russian nihilism, it was hard for her to find a job in Russia. And also, she could not leave to find a job elsewhere because at the time, a married woman couldn't live away from her husband. And she was only able to get an academic job after her husband committed suicide and when she could live where she wanted, basically. And this job she found with the help of Gusta mittag a mathematician she knew from when she studied with Weierstrass. And he helped her to get an academic job in Stockholm University. From there, in 1884, she became the editor of Acta Mathematics, which is now one of the most prestigious journals in pure mathematics. In 1888, she won the Prix Bourdin of the French Academy of Science, which was her greatest achievement. And this was for, for her work in classical mechanics, about a rigid body which rotates about a fixed points. And the equations which describe this are really quite difficult. In, in classic mechanics, the precision of a rigid body, such as a spinning top under the influence of gravity, is in general not integrable. And roughly speaking, integrable means that it's not chaotic. And Sophia found an example for which this is integrable. And this example is now known as the Kovalevskaya top. There are only three such integrable examples. And these are the Euler Poinçot case, the Lagrange Poisson case, and the Kovalevska case. And actually, she proved that these three examples are the only possible ones. In 1888, she was also the first woman to become a corresponding member of the Russian Academy of Sciences even though she was never able to become a professor in Russia because to do that, she needed a Russian master's degree, but in Russia, women weren't allowed to take the exam needed to get the degree. 
And finally, in 1989, she became the chair of analysis at Stockholm University and was given a lifetime professorship. She was the first woman in modern mathematics to become a tenured professor. She died two years later after getting tenure at age 41. I hope you enjoyed this short biography of Sofia Kovalevskaya. And I, wa- I plan to do many more of these to get the word out and also because I have fun and I learn a lot while doing it. And if anyone has suggestions of who I sh- should cover next, if anyone has some mathematical idol that they'd like to be talked about, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you next time.